this video, after 6 months of dialysis 3 times a week, this 71-year-old patient did the impossible. She came off dialysis for good. It's true! By following a gut-focused diet, she was able to be dialysis-free for 9 years. Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine. Question. Have you ever been told by your doctor that once you get on the big D machine, there is no getting off? That it's a one-way ticket? Well, maybe that's true. Or maybe your doctor is just not doing enough to save you. This skinny doctor from Turkey has just proved the world that dialysis is not the end. He proved that even in the most advanced stages, as long as you are still making urine, CKD can be reversed. Even patients who have been hooked up to that machine for months can still escape. So today, we are breaking down one of the most shocking case reports I've ever seen. This patient is a 71-year-old woman. She had been on dialysis for 6 months before meeting this nephrologist. And honestly, she was a wreck. Diabetic, hypertensive, anemic, malnourished. And here is the thing. Treating a 71-year-old in this condition, it's usually mission impossible. You are on dialysis for life, they told her. They even put a fistula in her arm. That is the mark of no return. But six months after dialysis started, the incredible happened. She started the protocol we are going to see today. And they had to remove her fistula for good. She never needed dialysis again. The foods, the supplements, the lifestyle choices we are going to see today saved her from dialysis. So let's unlock this protocol immediately. But do not skip the end of this video. I will share the secret weapon, the specific supplement this doctor used to kickstart this 71-year-old patient out of dialysis. Don't miss it. And if you know someone who needs hope, share this video with them right now. Okay, guys, let's start with the most important step, the diet. This entire miracle is built on probiotic-rich foods. And the first one, it's a game changer. It's called jujube vinegar. What is jujube vinegar and how is it going to help the kidneys? This is a fermented vinegar made from the jujube fruit. Pretty exotic, huh? And here is the secret. It's raw, it's unfiltered, and it contains the mother. That is a thriving colony of beneficial bacteria that your kidneys are desperate for. Science shows that jujube vinegar increases lactobacillus in the gut. But why do we care, you ask? Because when lactobacillus goes up, uremic toxins go down. And those toxins are what put people on dialysis. Now, I know jujube vinegar can be hard to find, but don't worry, the paper gives us a common alternative, raw apple cider vinegar, or ACV in short. I have mentioned this a thousand times on Double Okini, and this case study proves I was right. Why ACV? Probiotics! ACV has the mother too! Even a tiny amount, just 3 milliliters a day, floods your gut with kidney-saving bacteria. And trust me guys, improving your gut health is the fastest backdoor to saving your kidneys. In fact, the diet that got this 71-year-old woman off dialysis, it's a probiotic bomb! Breakfast, lunch, dinner, probiotics everywhere! Like sauerkraut! This is fermented cabbage, right? If you have never tried it, you may be interested in knowing it can contain millions of good bacteria per gram. But look at the dose. She is eating a tiny amount, just two tablespoons. But here is the catch. You cannot eat the cheap stuff in a can. It must be raw. It must be unpasteurized. Pasteurization kills the bacteria. It kills the medicine. You need the stuff found in the refrigerated section. Raw live cultures. Yes, it's salty, but you only eat a tiny bit. So here is the blueprint. 
I made a table of the exact probiotic foods she ate. Take a screenshot. No matter the stage of CKD you are in, this is your shopping list for saving your kidneys. And now, some of you are probably screaming at the screen, Catherine, I hate vinegar, I hate sauerkraut. Wouldn't it be easier to just take a probiotic supplement? Well, yes, but listen to me closely. We know today that the right probiotic doesn't just help with digestion. It doesn't just help with blood sugar or immunity. It can directly help your kidneys do the job they are failing to do. This is the foundation of the protocol that saved this woman from dialysis. Because here is the secret. Regular probiotics help you poop. Kidney-specific probiotics, they act like microscopic Pac-Man. They literally feed on the poisons that are destroying your kidneys. Urea, uric acid, creatinine, indoxyl sulfate. To you, those are toxins. To these bacteria, that is lunch. But here is the trap. Working with CKD patients, I see it every day. You want to help your kidneys, but you have a sensitive stomach, IBS, bloating. The truth is, when you start a generic drugstore probiotic, you often feel worse before you feel better. Gas, pain, discomfort. So you stop taking it and your kidneys lose their defense. This is exactly why I created Renobiotic. This is the first probiotic supplement in the world that is made with needs of real CKD patients in mind. It is low FODMAP. That means it is perfectly safe for gut sensitivity. No bloating, no pain, just results. It includes specialized strains selected for one purpose, to treat renal toxins. If you want the tool that fights for you, get Renobiotic from Renobiotech. Link in the description. And if you want to supercharge it, add Renofiber. Think of it this way. Renobiotic is the army. Rena fiber is the fuel. Rena fiber nourishes the good bacteria so they can work harder to save your kidneys. Make sure you never run out of this power couple. Actually, I have also included the acacia fiber in this Rena biotic. But it is not the only part. Yeah, there is more to getting a patient off dialysis than just probiotics, especially when you are fighting a war on multiple fronts, hypertension, diabetes, anemia. And look at this. This is the scary part. After six months of dialysis, she was barely hanging on. She was only making 800 milliliters of urine a day. That is the lifeline. If that number drops, if that stops, it is game over. For her to stop dialysis, that number needed to go how do you do that, you ask? How do you reverse the flow? Well, the method used to save this woman is fascinating. It wasn't about treating a kidney. It was about treating the whole human. To escape the machine, she was prescribed a protective diet. Yes, prescribed by her nephrologist. She was prescribed exercise, but done in a very peculiar way. We will see in a moment. She was consulted on motivation because the mind gives up before the body does, and she was taught to control fluids naturally, not with a machine. And to top it off, the doctor who published this study said something bold. He said that all drugs shall be prescribed by a nephrologist who puts kidney health first. Now, I have to ask you, is your doctor doing any of that? Are they helping you with a diet strategy? Are they checking your motivation? Are they even checking if your medications are silently damaging your kidneys? Please let me know in the comments because in my experience, most doctors are more worried about getting you started on dialysis than helping you avoid it. But hey, maybe that's just me. You tell me. Okay, guys, let's move on to the next part of the protocol. Let's talk about getting rid of excess fluids naturally. We just saw how to reduce toxin buildup, but that's not enough to get dialysis patients to stop dialysis because clearing toxins is an important job your kidneys do, but it's not the only job they have. Yeah, your kidneys are the organ equivalent of uh, single mothers with three children. They have many life-sustaining jobs and balancing electrolytes and removing excess fluids from the body is one of them. And that task, it is literally vital. 
When fluids build up, they can cause a lot of problems. Swelling, high blood pressure, trouble breathing, heart failure. So how do we get rid of this water when our kidneys are on strike? How do we survive without the machine draining us? Well, there is one simple trick this doctor discovered. It's all about turning your skin into your third kidney through sweat. This is called sweat therapy. When you sweat, you don't just lose water. You excrete potassium, sodium, urea, toxins. And for dialysis patients, that can be life-changing. Now guys, unlike taking probiotics, this is still an experimental protocol, all right? So make sure your doctor approves it before including sweating into your regimen. But this, it can be done. Now guys, jogging for 15 minutes a couple of times a week, it's not gonna cut it. Your kidneys work 24-7. If you want your skin to take over, you need to sweat a lot every single day. The best way? Walking a lot, preferably where it's hot. Now, if you live in Miami, great. But if it's freezing where you live, you still need to sweat. A sauna can also help or hot baths. And some people get creative. Have you ever seen boxers wearing a plastic bag over their clothes when they run in order to sweat more and make weight? Well, you might need to channel your inner Rocky. It looks funny, but it makes you sweat buckets. And that sweat, that is dialysis happening through your pores. Now, as you can see, the protocol is not all about sweating. Sweating is part one. Part two, sodium restriction. Now, this is something that I recommend to everyone. Yes, this part, it's not experimental at all. If you want to save your kidneys, no added salt, period. Salt holds water. You want to lose water. Simple physics. So make sure you follow this rule if you have CKD in any stage. And the last rule, avoid constipation at all costs. Just like avoiding sodium, this is non-negotiable. If you are constipated, take action. If your gut is the main emergency exit for toxins, the door must be open. If you are constipated, the toxins stay in your blood. And your kidneys are going to have to remove them. So take action. If you are backed up, start taking Rena Fiber immediately. Get a kidney safe laxative if you need to. Do not wait. A block gut is a block exit. But here is the tricky part. Not all laxatives are safe and not all drugs are safe. Let's see why. Let's talk about the forbidden medications, the drugs that might be keeping you on dialysis or that may be driving your kidneys to failure. So, as you can imagine, most of these are for blood pressure. I mean, we just spent five minutes talking about sweating to lower pressure. That should be a clue that the pills might be the problem. So, let's talk about the dangerous stuff first. The medications CKD patients in the advanced stages should not be taking. First, potassium sparing diuretic, spironolactone. If you are stage 4 or 5, I hope you aren't taking this. I can spike your potassium to lethal levels. Next, ARBs and ACE inhibitors, lisinopril, lothartan, these are standard for early kidney disease. But when kidney function is critically low, they can reduce the filtration pressure too much. They can actually stop the kidneys from filtering. Bottom line, the less medication you need, the better. That is why we do the diet. That is why we do the sweat therapy. Now, do not misunderstand me. I am not telling you to flush your pills down the toilet today. That is how you get a stroke. You cannot walk around with a blood pressure of 200 over 160. The goal is to do the natural work first. Sweat, diet, fluid control. Get the pressure down naturally so that your doctor can lower the meds safely. That is the path to freedom. So first, you improve your diet and lifestyle. Second, your doctor reduces your medications, not the other way around. I hope this is clear. And now the last part of the protocol. As I said, to stop the dialysis, you need one thing, urine. If you don't make urine, the fluids has nowhere to go. And if the fluid stays, you need the machine. But what if your kidneys are asleep? What if they need a jump start? There is one supplement that has shown incredible success in the medical literature. One molecule that can wake the kidneys up. I am talking about CoQ10. Now CoQ10, 
is in my daily renal multivitamin, Rena Best. All my patients take it, but for this purpose, it is special. It is probably the only molecule on earth used alone to kickstart and stage kidney back to life. Look at this paper. 21 dialysis patients. They gave them cocutane. Nine of them were able to get off dialysis completely. Nine out of 21. That is almost 50%. Their urine output went from a trickle 500 milliliters to a river over 1500 milliliters per day in just a few weeks. This is the power of cellular energy. And that is exactly why CoQ10 is non-negotiable for my patients. Hello, I'm Acacia Fiber. You can supplement me to avoid dialysis and I'm effective. And if you want to learn more about the incredible power of antioxidants like CoQ10, watch this video up here. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Happy New Year.